Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the KSP2 Low Mass Challenge series. This video will feature a manned, or if you prefer Kerbled, mission to Kerbin's smaller moon Minmus. Our goal in this mission will be to take Bill Kerman from the Kerbal Space Center into space, land on Minmus, plant a flag, and then return home safely. As it turned out, I accidentally loaded Tim into the craft rather than Bill. Didn't notice until I was already in space, so he's going to get his chance to shine in this. The optimization goal on this was to minimize the launch mass, which comes in at 1 metric ton, 230 kilograms. The lowest stage is propelled by the smallest jet engine available. Jet engines have by far the highest specific impulse, so we want to pick up as much speed and altitude on this stage as possible. As with the previous low mass mission, there is a challenge here with the lack of automated fuel priority and fuel transfers. The workaround for now is a manual fuel transfer. As we're getting ready to head to the next stage, I'm going to wait until the right moment and then manually transfer the remainder of the fuel out of the jet engine stage. We've saved 10 kilograms here by not attaching this to the stage above with the decoupler, but just attaching it directly. When the twitch engine on the next stage is turned on, this heats up the lowest stage and gives us some explosive decoupling. The third stage of the ascent is going to have very low TWR, so with the second stage we're going to pick up and pick up some vertical momentum to give us enough time to get to orbital speed. There's a trade-off here in the middle section. A steeper ascent results in more delta V loss to gravity, whereas a more shallow ascent results in more delta V loss to aerodynamic drag. The balance between center of mass and center of aerodynamic pressure on the craft is maintained throughout the stages of the ascent by splitting the wings between the lowest stage and the second stage. That way, when some of the wings are detached with the first stage, the center of pressure moves up along with the center of mass. The third stage is propelled by an ant engine, the smallest engine available in KSP-2 with only two kilonewtons of thrust, but the arc on our ascent is going to give it enough time to get us into a circular orbit. With 675 meters per second of delta V remaining, we have an elliptical orbit with an apoapsis above the 70 kilometer mark, which marks the top of Kerbin's atmosphere. We're going to wait until we get near that point to finish our burn into a circular orbit. We have reached circular orbit of Kerbin, and the final stage of our rocket has 652 meters per second of delta V remaining. As those who have gone to Minmus can attest, this is not enough delta V to get to Minmus, much less get to Minmus and return home. Those who saw the low mass challenges that we did in Kerbal Space Program 1 probably know how we're going to make up this gap, so let's start sending the rocket on its way to Minmus. From a low Kerbin orbit, we're going to start burning into an increasingly elliptical orbit of Kerbin. We've split this maneuver into multiple burns at periapsis to increase efficiency. We are going to use all the fuel left in the rocket, saving just a little bit of fumes at the end. From here, we are going to send Tim Kerman on EVA, and he is going to be headed to the moon by himself. This might seem like a preposterous thing to attempt, but the EVA pack in Kerbal Space Program has an astonishing amount of delta V available, about 700 meters per second. By comparison, its real-life equivalent from NASA has about 20 meters per second. Further delta V savings are going to be achieved by doing a flyby of the moon. This is going to steal some momentum of the moon slingshotting us into a higher orbit without any fuel used. Our next goal will be to land efficiently on Minmus. Whether we're landing a giant space plane or a single Kerbal with an EVA pack, an efficient landing is all about getting as low and as fast as possible and doing as much of our maneuver as possible at a low altitude. We are going to push this to the extreme by aiming right for the surface of Minmus, looking to get there moving perpendicular to the surface, still at escape velocity. In Kerbal Space Program 1, some rather silly lunar landings were possible with a Kerbal. 
By getting real close to the ground and impacting the ground with about 40 meters per second of horizontal velocity and near zero vertical velocity, the Kerbal would be perfectly fine and then would proceed to slowly tumble to a stop on the surface, saving us about 40 meters per second of delta V. I wanted to know if this would still be possible in Kerbal Space Program 2, so I tested it, and it turns out it's not. But what can be done is even more silly. With all apologies to those struggling to suspend disbelief, it's not silly if it works. Tim has made it to Minmus safely. We've planted a flag. It's now time to see if we can get him home safe. Following a similar principle to what we used for the landing, we're going to do our entire maneuver to get back to a low curb and approach as soon as we leave the surface of Minmus. Anything we do closer to the surface of the moon is going to be more efficient. One thing that would have been possible here to save additional delta V would have been to do a rendezvous with the moon on the way back to Kerbin. I didn't think this was necessary because my margins were looking quite good. However, I did turn out to use more fuel out of the EVA pack for corrections to fine tune Tim's return than I thought I would. And I did at some point regret not having saved that fuel. Tim cannot land on Kerbin on his own without the re-entry heating leaving him rather well done, so we're going to need to rendezvous with the rocket that we had left in an elliptical Kerbin orbit on our way to Minmus. Our return from Minmus has left our elliptical orbit of Kerbin quite a bit higher than that of the rocket, so we're going to take many passes through Kerbin's atmosphere to slow down, making sure that we only graze the very top of the atmosphere to avoid overheating. Once I had a close approach with the rocket, I realized that I did not have enough EVA fuel remaining. There was enough to do a couple very fine corrections, but not enough to retro burn and cancel out our relative velocity. The only solution left available to us was to take very careful aim for the rocket and get ready to grab the chair as we approached. It's now time to land on Kerbin. Tim is safely back in the rocket, which, as is tradition here, has no landing gear, no parachutes. We're still in an elliptical orbit of Kerbin, but using the tiny amount of fuel that had been left in the rocket earlier, we're able to drop our periapsis right below the 70 kilometer mark. Just like we slowed down to rendezvous with the rocket, we are going to slow down to a circular low Kerbin orbit over many successive orbits. While this rocket does not have any wings or aerodynamic control surfaces, we do have a very low mass and a fairing which will generate a small amount of effective lift when pitched appropriately. To control this pitch, there is an RCS unit inside the craft which can impart a torque on it. While it is not particularly maneuverable or stable, this will give us some ability to aim our descent. Due to the low amount of control, it's necessary that we get our landing zone correct well before the approach. One thing in our favor here was that in the middle atmosphere of Kerbin, there was enough attitude control from the stability unit to keep us pitched 45 degrees above the horizon, allowing us to slow down quite a bit before we had to go into the final approach. On the unfortunate side of things for our pilot, testing had determined that there was no way for this rocket to remain intact on a landing on Kerbin, whether it was set down on land or on water, and regardless of what speed it was going at, it would be destroyed on landing. Fortunately, there is always a workaround. Kudos to the Kerbal Space Center on this one. Kerbal Space Program 1 had a swimming pool that had imitation water in it. Attempting to land in it just resulted in hitting the bottom as if nothing was there. So I'd call this a win. Space Program budget well spent. 
That brings this mission and the second installment in our Low Mask Challenge series to an end. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. I can't wait to show you guys the next installment in this series. Thank you everyone very much for watching.